A memo with a cover note from ExxonMobil was sent to the White House. The memo asked if Dr. Robert Watson, head of the IPCC, could be replaced at the request of America. The administration withdrew its support. Dr. Watson was not re-elected. The Bush administration and the position of some in the private sector was that I was overemphasizing the importance and the seriousness of climate change and therefore probably uh, they viewed it would be better to have a different chair. It tends to be more of a boot in your face style of governance. It's we have the power, we have the money, we have the votes, uh, we're not interested in talking to you. Uh, with your reform ideas. Um, we have our agenda to run. Oh, it's old. It's been updated and upgraded and is, we understand... The alarmists permitted. are people like Linnell Anderson. She's accused Governor George Bush of making it easier for companies to pollute and is angry that in just six years he left an appalling legacy for both Houston and the state. Number one in smokestacks, number one in ozone pollution, number one in toxic pollution. When you have that many number ones, it's time to stop and take account, and he refused. If Texas were a country, we would be number six in the world for the emission of greenhouse gases. President Bush is forcing SUVs to become more fuel efficient. But in America today, you still get a tax break for buying a Hummer. In the last six years, most industrialized nations have cut greenhouse gas emissions. But under George Bush, U.S. emissions have increased by an average of 1% a year. America emits a quarter of the world's greenhouse gases. As reports have flooded in warning of the dangers, scientists say the censorship's tightened. I had hoped that as we presented a clearer and stronger story about the status of global climate, that this would begin to have some impact on the policies. Dr. James Hansen, one of the world's top climate scientists, has repeatedly warned of the dangers himself. It seems that they want to listen to those people who say the things that they want to hear rather than listen to the scientists who know most, most about the topic. We've tracked the fate of an environmental report produced in 2003 by the administration. It was called Our Changing Planet. The document was severely edited within the White House. Rick Piltz worked in a federal coordinating office as the managing editor of this document and others. There were a lot of edits. There were hundreds uh, of edits in these documents. If it has to do with uh, observed warming, observed changes, uh, the language is softened. If it has to do with projected greater changes in the future, uh, the language will have some kind of uncertainty uh, in, uh, included to create the sense that this is a fundamentally uncertain work that is really just not a basis for any further discussion. Page after page, the edits emphasize that there's no need for alarm. The Earth is undergoing a period of rapid change becomes maybe. Human actions will affect the global climate is changed to might. A section on global warming dangers complains the findings are always negative and asks what about the benefits. With better growing conditions, there may be more food and forest products for harvesting. This is just one of a number of major reports we've had access to. Some were edited in the same way. In another, the entire section on global warming was simply removed. And in one case, the whole report was sent into what was described to us as a bureaucratic black hole. It wasn't a matter of how can we edit this in such a way as to most clearly communicate the state of science to the public. It was, how can we spin this in such a way that it doesn't cause problems for the White House by conveying the impression that we're acknowledging the seriousness of the global warming problem? A White House office is responsible for the changes, the Council on Environmental Quality. They argue that only policy, not science documents, have been edited, and that not all the edits are final. James Connaughton is in charge. 
What matters is, are they being vetted by the right people? And at the end of the day, comments are accepted or rejected, in the case of science, by our scientists. With the R-Changing Planets, yeah. were okay. the edits to, R to the R-Changing Planet final edits? Were they in the final report? Yeah, very often they were in the final report, yes. So was the final document a lot weaker than the original suggested document? It was weaker in key ways. The ultimate decisions are made by the, by the expert people with responsibility to be sure they're correct. The chief of staff was a former oil industry lobbyist from the American Petroleum Institute. These were not career science people. They were politicals. Their principal job was to further uh, the policy agenda of the White House. When much of the country were glued to their television watching the events unfolding in, in New Orleans, it was uh, disturbing the fact that uh, they were repeatedly told that there was no relationship between global warming and hurricanes. That was the official position. The head of NOAA has come out and um, said publicly and to his employees that there is no problem, that scientists can say whatever they like. What do you make of his statement? And it's very, very clear that he is pretending that in the first part of his tenure as administrator of NOAA that somehow none of this ever happened. The world was changing dramatically, but few scientists yet dared speak of censorship. Then in December, it got worse. NASA announced that last year was the hottest year ever recorded. Its top climate scientist issued a warning. We're rapidly reaching the point of no return. We're getting very close to a tipping point where we're going to have climate changes that are out of our control. Scientists said if actions not taken within a decade, millions of the world's poorest could face drought and starvation. Heat and ice melt could swell seas far more than originally predicted. And critically, for the administration, this means mainland America would be hit too. So there, there would be enormous impacts, not just New Orleans, but in the United States, you'd be talking about Boston, New York, Washington, D.C. There'd be many cities underwater. When Dr. Hansen rang this alarm bell at a speech in December, the repercussions were swift. People had been bouncing off the walls at NASA headquarters. It was described as a shitstorm. And I, I was told that um, I would, could, should not give any further uh, talks without first getting approval from NASA headquarters. And if I did, if I didn't uh, obey this uh, instructions, that there would be dire consequences without explanation of what dire consequences were. Hansen says his public utterings were then all subjected to official review. He felt cornered. Anything that was to be put on our website would have to have prior approval from NASA headquarters. And any future talks would need to have prior approval from NASA headquarters. And any interviews with any of the media would require prior approval by NASA headquarters. James Hansen went public. NASA reacted, declaring scientists were free. But scientists say it's not clear yet that the battle's been won. The administration says there was never a problem. I do find uh, pretty shocking these allegations of censorship given the very public um, availability and access uh, and engagement of our scientific community on these issues. And it's the U.S. that's leading the way in this. So are you saying that there's been no censorship, no gagging, that these scientists are making it up or what? The fact that documents are edited is a given course of government. I do not regard that as censorship. As a small part of the earth slips away into oblivion, the Bush administration stands accused of trying to silence nature's most compelling warnings and of misleading its people. Precious time has been lost, and that carries a price. For five or ten years, the public has not been fully informed, and we, we, we're not taking the initial steps that need to be taken. So, and if we continue down this path another five years or so, we're going to be past a point at which we can avoid really large climate changes. <laughs>